Welcome to the Daily Word, verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Hebrews. Keep in mind, I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're using a different translation, the read is different with the message you're saying. Also, keep in mind that these Daily Word, verse by verse studies are uploaded to my YouTube channel, BP the Bible Perspective. That's BP the Bible Perspective. So like and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective and like and share these videos. Okay, we're in chapter 6. And um, we're gonna today. We're gonna do just that. We're gonna go on and leave the elementary message <laughs> about this once saved, always saved. And 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 only I wanted to spend just a, a few moments, a few you know, a little short time, kind of dealing with that mostly, so that we can understand how to read and understand scripture, interpret scripture. The biggest problem, of course, is not interpreting the scripture with the context for which the writer has been writing about in the entire letter of Hebrews. So that you, it is always bad, and this is our habit, and it is a bad one, theologically, where you just open your Bible and you start reading this passage of scripture and isolate it. So... Verse 4 talks about when he said it is impossible to renew to repentance. He is referring to those who have heard the gospel but have not committed. Faith-wise, see, not those who have committed, have believed, and have been born again. And I want to go to one scripture uh, because I left off in verse 7 in which I said a lot of people stop reading at verse 6. And they don't read in verse 7, For the ground that has drunk the rain, and has often fallen on it, that produces vegetation, is useful for those, it is cultivated, for it receives the blessing from God. But if it reduce thorns and vessels, it is worthless, and about to be cursed, and will be burned at the end. And that's crucial to understanding what he's referring to here, because he is referring to, how the Word of God works in people's lives, the effect, and it's important to understand that. The problem, of course, with, the, with, with refuting with people, and I'm only using the term once saved, always saved, because that's the theological argument base, okay? And so there are those, the reason why they say that you're not guaranteed your salvation is because these people are stepped in a work salvation. You know, you have to earn your way to heaven. And so because of that, they are, for example, you hear search, certain statements, I'm just trying to make heaven my home. Or, how about this one? I just want to be ready when he comes. So the question is, how do you make yourself ready? And so... The fear of not being ready plagues people because, truthfully, you can never make yourself ready. And by the way, even with Hebrews, this is why it's important to understand even what the writer is saying. The writer is saying this, by the way, keep in mind, under the backdrop of the Jewish system of obeying the law. And so under the law, he says, you, it took Jesus as the high priest. To offer a better sacrifice for us. He's the captain of our salvation. So theologically has spoiled us badly in terms of our thinking. Now I want to read in um, chapter 4 because that, this is important. So that again when you read passages of scripture. And there's another one that's going to come up in the 10th chapter. And again it's going to help us to understand. Uh, and also as well as other scriptures. Um, so, verse 26, I'm, I'm going to read again out of Mark chapter 4, verse 26. It says, the kingdom of God is like this. He said, a man scatters seed on the ground, he sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grow, and he doesn't know how the soil produces the crop by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the, uh, then, uh, and then the ripe grain on the head. But as soon as the crop is ready, he sends for the sickle, and because because the harvest have come. Um, now, I want to go um, 
Oh, I, I, I actually read the wrong one. I'm going to go back. That's not what I wanted to read here. Um, okay, let me go back to verse, okay, so in verse 3, he says, Listen, consider the sower who went out to sow. He sowed this, he sowed this, a carrot, and this a carrot. Some seed fell among the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where it didn't have much soil, and it sprang up right away. And since it didn't have depth, uh, soil, and when, verse 6, and when the sun came up, it was scorched, and since it didn't have much root, it withered. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it didn't produce a crop. Still others fell on good ground and produced a crop that increased 30, 60, and 100 times what was sown. Now, the reason I want to read the parable, because I'm going to read the interpretation, the reason I want to read the parable is because what the parable makes clear what was stolen. And this is important. It was the seed that was stolen. In other words, only one case, there were four cases where he sowed the seed, and out of, out of, out of the cases, one only produced fruit. And that's important to understand what he's saying here. Now, um, verse number 13 uh, verse number 14, he says, The sower sows the word. These are the ones among the path where the word is sown. And when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. So in other words, the word did not have its chance to grow, germinate, and produce fruit. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy. But they have no root in themselves. And they are short-lived. When affliction or persecution comes because of the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Others are sown on thorns, and these are the ones that hear the word. But the word of this age and the destruction of this word, desires of other things, enter and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. So again, in all, now we, we, we're taught this verse, pastors teach this verse from the perspective of, you know, them teaching their sermons, and then how the congregations receive uh, their message. That's not what he's talking about right here, okay? Jesus is not talking in the church that he's talking to people who are not born again. There was a general crowd during this time. So three examples of the word did not enter into the heart and then produce, okay? At verse 20, but the ones sown on good ground are those who hear the word and welcome it and produce crop 30, 60, and 100 times that was sown. So only one example of these uh, word of God, the word being sown, produced life, produced eternal life, produced fruit. So now when he says right here in verse 7, for the ground that has drunk the rain and that often fallen on it and it produced vegetation useful to those, it is cultivated for it received blessings from God. But if it produced thorns and thistles, it is worthless and it's about to be cursed. And will be burnt at the end. So this is the the the, 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 the I think the, the the main point to understand. So the the ones that the writers is referring to are those who you've heard the word. You fall in these three categories. So the word is not you, you haven't committed to the word. You're not entering into, into the rest because of what your unbelief. You haven't committed. So only one example. Now that one example. Look at verse nine. Even though we are speaking this way. Dear friends, in your case, okay, we are confident of better things connected with salvation. So, he makes the difference in who he was referring to as opposed to what? The friends, those who have what? Received, who have embraced the word of God by faith. He says, we're not speaking this to you. Again, see how important that is? That's why theologically you just can't dissect one section of scripture. We have to read it all. So he says, we're not speaking this way. So, to sum this up, the idea here of those who hear the word of God, even if they see miracles, and, and, and many partook during the first generation of Israelites and also the generation that Jesus was here. They saw the power of God. They experienced the power of God. Many of them received miracles and healings. 
Um, and so they, they met all that, but yet many of them walked away from Jesus. Many of them uh, um, rejected him. Okay. And so that's who he's referring to, the rebuke. You're not producing the fruit. This is your outcome. He's kind of laying it out to them. If you do not believe, what, there's nothing else for you. And that is a good question to ask the Orthodox Jew today. What are, what are you practicing? What is the Orthodox Jew practicing? What are, what are they practicing in their religion? And this is speaking to them even today. Okay, I want to pick it up at verse 10 in the next video. So I will see you.